In this video, we're going to talk about uncertainty in measurements and some of the basics that you need to know about the propagation of uncertainties. When the length of a table is written as 1.51 plus minus 0 0.02 meters, this means that the true value is unlikely to be less than 1.49 meters or more than 1.53 meters. This is how we report the accuracy of a measurement. If you're not sure about the accuracy of a measurement, it may be because of the level of precision of the instrument. So you would write your reading as 1.51 with an uncertainty of 0.02 meters. 0.02 is your uncertainty. Uncertain means you're not sure of it. If you're not sure about your measurement, you tell the reader what you're not sure of. And you're not sure by 0.02 meters. Your measured value is 1.51. Therefore, if you write it like this, it gives the reader an idea that the measured value might be 1.49 meters or as large as 1.53 meters. That's just basically 1.51 plus 0 0.02 meters is 1.53 meters. And 1.51 minus 0 0.02 is 1.49 meters. So the value lies in between uh, these numbers. The maximum and minimum provides upper and lower bounds to the true value. The shorthand notation is reported as 1.51 uh, parentheses and then your uncertainty and then the, the unit. So this is the shortcut of this one. So you can also write 1.51 plus minus 0 0.02 instead of writing it in this long manner. You can just write it this way. 1.51, enclose your uncertainty in parentheses and then write your units. The number enclosed in parentheses indicates the uncertainty in the final digit of the number see something like this, this means this is how a scientist represents their measured value together with their degree of uncertainty or by how much they're not really sure of how much the measurement is uh, on that scale. So don't worry guys, um, next week in our class I'm going to teach you how to read um, a measurement together with, with its uncertainty on an analog device and a di digital device. So let's talk about that next week in our meeting. Um, I have another concept that I'd like you to know. It's when you add two measurement with two individual uncertainties. For example, I want to invite your attention to this example. Um, I have a bar here. This bar is uh, shorter. I have two bars actually, and this bar is shorter than the other bar. I'll name this bar L1, and I try to measure this bar. Uh, my measurement is 20, and my uncertainty, of course, in every measurement, there's always an uncertainty. Uh, my uncertainty is 0 0.2 centimeters. So it's 20 centimeters, and then its uncertainty is 0 0.2 centimeters. I have a second bar, and it's a longer one. I'll name this L2. And say if I measured L2, I got 30 with an uncertainty of uh, 0 0.5 centimeter. And... For example, I try to glue them in one piece 
So this is L1 and this is L2. I'll, I try to glue them so it becomes a very big, long piece of wood or metal, whatever it's made of. I don't really care. Um, so how do we go about combining the measured value together with the uncertainty? Do we add the measured value and the uncertainty together and then add them finally both? Or do we subtract them? What do you think? Well, let's deal with this in a brute force manner. Let's say I get the maximum value and then the minimum value by getting the maximum value of L1 and maximum value of L2. And let's tr try to add them together because we're trying to add the two sticks or the two bars together. So let's say L is equal to L1 plus L2 an. We know that L1 plus L2, which is 20 plus 30, is equal to 50 centimeters. But what we're trying to know is how are we going to deal with the uncertainty? Do we add them? Do we add them to the measured value and then finally add them together? Or do we add them separately? So the question is, what is our... I'm going to represent the, un, the, the uncertainty using this one, alpha, L. What's our alpha L or the uncertainty, the, com the composite uncertainty of our bar? when you add them together. So let's deal with this with maximum and minimum value. So the L max is just take the maximum value of this bar L1, which is 20 plus 0 0.2 centimeters, which is 20.2. That's the maximum value of this bar. What about this bar? The maximum value is 30.5 an. So you would know that the maximum possible value if you try to combine the two bars together is 50.7 centimeters, right? What about the minimum value? Let's try. Minimum value of L1 is 19.8. 19.8 is 20 minus 0 0.2. That's 19.8. Plus the minimum the least possible value of L2, which is 29.5. So it would give you 49.3 centimeters. So your maximum value is 50.7, and then your minimum possible value when you add the two sticks together is 49.3 centimeters. Now, you would guess intuitively that the true value or the most accurate value is going to be somewhere in between that. We're going to report the sum of L1 and L2 together with their individual uncertainties using the number or the value between the upper bound and the lower bound. And that's just L is equal to 50 plus minus 0 0.7 centimeters. This is the answer. This is what's in between. And we already know that it's going to be 50, right? Because um, from L1 plus L2, we know that it's 20 plus 30 is equal to 50. What we were looking for or what we were trying to figure out is just the sum of their uncertainties. And we could have guessed it from the start. It's actually just 0 0.7 centimeters. I could just conveniently add 0 0.2 and 0 0.5, and it would give me 0 0.7 centimeters. So actually, the answer is whenever you try to add two measurement with their individual uncertainties, just add their uncertainty. So just add 20 plus 30, it would give you 50. And then 
um, their uncertainty, just add both of them to that 0 0.2 plus 0 0.5, that's going to be 0 0.7 centimeter. So whenever you have um, an addition of two things with their uncertainty, just add their uncertainty. All right, so let's go on with a second example that I would like you to try on your own. So I want to actually know the difference between L2 and L1. L2 is obviously longer than L1. This is L2. And L1 is obviously shorter than L2. So I want to know the difference. I want to know the measurement here. So I want to subtract L1 from L2, but each still has its own uncertainty. So how do we go about taking the difference between two measurement, which has its own individual uncertainties? How do we go about that? So we will express this as L is equal to L2 minus L1. And we want to know the uncertainty of the final measurement of the difference between the two measurement. So I want you to like pause the video and tell me what you think. And then we'll try to know if we both have the same answer. All right. So actually, it turns out that the answer for this is just 10 plus minus 0 0.7 centimeters. When adding or subtracting two quantities, the uncertainty in, is the sum of the individual uncertainties. So we can therefore say that, let me write it down for you, L, whether we add both quantities or we subtract both quantities, both of their uncertainties is still going to be just the sum of the individual uncertainties. So whether you add both quantities or delete, I mean subtract them, the final uncertainty of the final number, the sum or the difference, is still just the sum of both individual uncertainties. So I think, I hope that's very clear. If you have any questions, you can ask me in class. Now I want us to go to a more difficult, it's not really difficult, but just a little bit difficult, but nothing is difficult, just like what I told you. You can do, we can do everything, you know. So let's, we dealt with adding and subtracting two measurements with individual uncertainties. What about dividing and multiplying? Let's go about that. Say I have a block of wood here and my height is read as 10 with an uncertainty of 0 0.2 centimeters and then my width is measured as, I measured it as 20 plus minus 0 0.2 centimeter. So I have my measured value of my height. I mean, not my height, but the wood block's height with an uncertainty reported as 0 0.2 centimeter together with its uh, width, 20. Its uncertainty is still 0 0.2 centimeter. So if I want to get the area, the area is obviously width times height, All right? So width times height, if we try to multiply 20 and 10, that's actually 
200. So we have 200 centimeters squared. This is our measured area, basing from the measured weight and the measured, I mean the measured width and then the measured height. So we have 200 centimeters squared. The question is, what's gonna be our area? I mean, the uncertainty of our area now. So let's try to still deal with it using the method that we did earlier while we tried to add the two bars. Um, let's get the maximum area and the minimum possible area. So the maximum possible area is A max is equal to the, maxim the maximum possible um, width is actually 20.2 multiplied by its maximum possible height, which is 10.2. We have 206.09 centimeters squared maximum area. And then the minimum area that we can possibly have is actually 19.8. And 10 minus 0 0.2 is 9.8. So the minimum possible area that we are going to have is 198.09 centimeters squared. So we have our maximum possible area and the minimum possible area. So the true value or the value that you should use to report would intu intuitively lie between this one. We already know that it's 200. It turns out that the area that we should report is actually 200 plus minus 6 centimeters squared. Your uncertainty should be 6 centimeters squared. And we um, it's actually true if you try to add 200 plus 6, it would give us 206, and 200 uh, minus 6, it's it's going to give us around 190, 194. You might ask me, sir, how did you get the 6? How did you get the 6? How is this possible? Well, one way of getting this is actually by using this formula. I'm going to teach you this formula. This is something that you need to know. I'll try to delete this and I'll give you the formula and getting the uncertainty when you try to divide or multiply two uh, uncertainties. Uh, the uncertainty in this case of an area is equal to the value, measured value of the area times the uncertainty on the width over the measured width plus the uncertainty on the height over the measured height. So if we try to do this and get the fractional error, this is how you get the fractional error, by the way. Fractional error is equal to the error over the measured value. So if we want to get the fractional error for the width, um, it's just your error of the width. The error of your width a while ago is 0 0.2 divided by your measured width, which is 20. So if you try to solve that, 0 0.2 divided by 20 is 0 0.2. Zero, 0.01 and if you try to multiply that by 100% it's going to give you the percent error so this is your fractional error
and when you multiply it to 100%, it's going to give you its percent error, which is 1%. By the way, um, we, always, we always report our errors or uncertainties to one significant figure. So this is one significant figure. This is also one significant figure. We only have the hundreds place, which is one, as our significant digit here. So we have one for, let's try to write this. Uh, let's see if I can copy this and then paste it here. So this is our answer. And let's try to get the fractional error of the height. So we already know the formula for the fractional error of the height. It's the error itself. The error or the uncertainty of our height a while ago is still, was still 0 0.2. So we have uncertainty and then the measured value of the height, we have 0 0.2 divided by um, 20. Oh no, um, it's 10. So 0 0.2 divided by 10 is 0 0.02. Or if you want to make it into percent error, like this one, just multiply it to 100% and it's going to be 2%. So this is actually your um, percent error. This is your fractional error. All right. So we have 3%. If you try to add 1% and 2%, that's 3%. And if you get 3% of 200, 200 times 3% which is going to make it 0 0.03, 200 times 0 0.03, you will have 6, which is our uncertainty here. So do you get it? Do you get the pattern? So if you try to get the percent error of each measurement or dimension and you add it together, you will have your sum of the percent error, which is 3%. 1 plus 2 is 3%. If you get 3% of 200, it's going to be 6, which is our um, uncertainty for our area. But you can also sol solve it this way. So if you want to solve it this way, I'll delete the whole thing below here. So your measured area was 200 times um, the width is 0 0.2. That's your error of your width and your width a while ago is um, 20 plus uh, the error of your height is also 0 0.2 and your height is 10. So if you try to simplify this 200 times 0 0.2 divided by 20 you have 0 0.01 plus 0 0.02 200, 0 0.01 plus 0 0.02 is 0 0.03. And if you get 0 0.03 of 200, it's going to be 6, which is your uncertainty. So this is how you get the uncertainty when you divide or multiply two quantities or measurement. You use this formula. Or you can also get the fractional error, convert it to percent error. And once you have both percent errors, add it and then um, get the percentage out of the existing or measured area that you already have, which is 200.
So it's just basically the same. This is still technically 3% if you try to convert it to rate. So just add, uh, just move uh, two decimal places to the right and it's going to give you 3%. And if you want to multiply that to 200, of course, you're going to convert the rate to um, this one. You just have to move two decimal places to the left. So it's just basically the same. So if you have any more questions, um, please ask me in class. Write it down so you don't forget. Um, so in this lesson, we covered what or how we should report uncertainties or how we should report measurement together with, with its uncertainty, its shorthand notation, how we combine two uncertainties when we add or subtract them, and how we should report or compute for an uncertainty if we multiply two quantities or divide two quantities. This also works the same way. Um, I think that's it. Um, if you have any questions, just ask me in class. And this is the end of this screencast. Goodbye.